Welcome to this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. I am Dan, and you can find me at Arvest Dan. And I'm Jess, and you can find me at Snow Dogs Vlogs. I oh, still don't have a theme song. I feel so empty in the beginning. I blame you. I blame oh, wait, me. because it's your fault. <laughs> it is my <laughs> fault. It is my fault. At this point, I've just kind of gotten used to it being just silent and awkward in the beginning, but if any of you guys out there know how to write music or make theme songs, let us know. We'll, uh... We'll compensate you. Yeah, you can either comment on, what is it, the Podbean app you can comment on, or you can go to our group page and let us know there. Yeah, go to the Podbean app. If you guys are new to the podcast, or if you guys go to our Facebook page, click on the links when we post the episode, because that'll take you to a whole new page where you'll see photos of things that have happened in the episodes that we talk about, and and a whole write-up of of what you're going to listen to. It's done really nice. Good job, Jess. Thanks. Yeah, the, I think the, the for following, I think the Podbean app is definitely one of the best places to follow us. Just because you can leave like comments and it's just, I don't know, I just really like it. I really like the way it's it's laid out. Now that I'm listening to more podcasts, I found more of them on Podbean. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're like advertising for them. Can we get paid for this? I think so. I think I've seen people give out coupon codes for Podbean. So maybe we should ask oh. Mr. Bean or... <laughs> Mr. Bean. Yeah, I just figured it's just everybody's name. So, Mr. Bean out there, please, uh, please let us know if we if we can give ourselves a CC Mouse podcast coupon code. But we would like some pennies, right? But like we said, if anybody out there knows how to do any kind of like intro music and stuff, uh, let us know because we are in the market for a good intro. Yeah, because we're only on what episode twelve, and you still haven't figured that out. Mm-mm. <laughs> okay. Just saying. Let's rephrase what we're asking for. Please get down out of hot water with Jess by helping me get a <laughs> get a theme song. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now back to your regular scheduled podcast programming. <laughs> so last week you talked about going to the West Michigan Pet Expo. Yeah, that was this past weekend. How was that? It was actually really fun. This is the first time we've gone to that one. We've done different pet expos, which you guys know. Um, we've done many different ones before, but this was the first time we went to that one and I don't know, it was different. We had our own private locker room with private bathrooms. So like if we got, if the dogs got overwhelmed, we could just take them in the locker room and chill out. Like that's where we went and had lunch and stuff. And it was really neat. It was, and we met like a lot of people. It was crazy how many people showed up. (laughs) I'm really curious. You had your own green room? Pretty much. Yeah. Was it big? There was even a shower in there. Wow. Dang, that's yeah, crazy. it was really neat. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's something that we've never we've never had before. Like, we've never had our own little private room that we could go into. Like at PetCon, there was a VIP lounge, which they said, you know, oh, you can go in the VIP lounge and you can kind of decompress and be with the other creators. But if you buy VIP passes to PetCon, you can get into the VIP lounge. So oh. it wasn't really <laughs> as much of a like off to the side place where you could actually like right. decompress. There was lots of people in there. It's... So this was really kind of neat. Yeah, you could just like shut the door and just be like, go away, <laughs> go yep. away. Yeah, it was, it, like I said, it was nice. When we took our break at midday, you know, and went and got lunch, mm-hmm. I would walk back there with Jamie, drop the dogs off, go back out, get us food, come back in, and the dogs got to eat lunch. And it was nice and quiet in there because, you know, it's loud. It's a convention. So, I mean, you've been to conventions. They're loud. Right. So it was just kind of nice because it was quiet in there. They were able to drink some water, take a little nap while we ate lunch. And uh, it worked out really, really well. I, I, I really enjoyed that. And, I mean, we had... We had people that drove from, oh, somebody said they came from Wisconsin. We had people that drove from Indiana, a couple people from Ohio. So we had people that drove to come meet the dogs at this convention. It was really cool. Wow, that's really neat. How big is the convention? It's not, I mean, it's, it's not as big as the Novi Pet Expo, but it was pretty good size. They have less entertainment than some of the other ones we've gone to, but they had a lot of vendors. There was a lot of rescues there. I mean, I size-wise, I, I it was a basket. We were in the basketball court area, and, like, the food court was in there. They had other entertainment in there. And then probably, like, two basketball-size courts uh, to the side of us. One of them was, like, all vendors, and then mm-hmm. one of them was, like, all rescues. Okay, so it was a decent size then. Yeah, it was a pretty good size. They had, they had a lot of people. How many people were there to see you? A, a lot. We had 200 stickers, 200 of each. So, like, I had four different ones, but I had 200 of each, and we ran out of all of them. Oh, wow. So that was a lot of people. Yeah, we ran out of all of them. I, I had 200 business cards. I ran out of all of those. So there was a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of pets. They all get pets, right? Like, they all get to pet the dogs. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, the dogs were just, like, in heaven. Memphis, at one point in time, I got a clip of it on, on one of the vlogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was literally laying in two people's laps at the same time. It was the cutest <laughs> thing in the world. 
<laughs> I wonder what they make of that. Just like, it's just time to get all the pets I ever asked for all in one day. I think that's how Memphis feels about it. I think Memphis is just like, this is the best moment of my life ever because all I ever want is love and I get all of it here. Shelby kind of, I mean, she's a diva, but she did really, really well. Like she was, she just kind of sprawled out, did her little sploot thing and let people pet her. And she seemed happy the whole time. Like there wasn't even a time with her where she, you could tell because sometimes with, with Shelby, she'll be like, I want out of here. Nope, the whole time she just laid on the floor and was like, this is cool, pet me, do whatever, Just I'm just here. <laughs> nice. Does Memphis so ever they... get fed up? No. No, I think Mem- Memphis is a lot like me. We could just sit out there all day. <laughs> so, so she outlasts the line. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, she falls asleep. You know, she'll lay down, and, like, there are, there are a lot of times where she's laying down, and she's asleep, and people are just petting her, but she could, I mean, that's what she wants. She's like, just pet me until I fall asleep, and then I'll just stay right here. And Right. But people would, like, if, even when she was napping and people would try to walk by, she would look up like, oh, are you going to pet me? Because you have hands, and hands are meant for petting. Oh, you're you're not going to pet me? Oh, oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, dang. Do you, uh, did you have merch? No. We, it's so hard for us. We need, like... We definitely need to start doing more with like a trailer because we had a lot of people ask if we had t-shirts and stuff, but it it's difficult with what we do because one, we have to have a place to travel with all that stuff. And then the other thing is, is now on top of trying to talk to, to everybody, make sure the dogs are okay and making sure, you know, that nothing's going wrong. You also have to be trying to handle money, trying to handle a register, trying to have people work with merch. If we were to ever do something like that, I would have to hire somebody else to come with us. Like it just... It, there would have to be a third person there. You know what's really popular that I see with some of the podcasts that I listen to that are medium size. Like I would think that like if you 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 would be medium size with your following, um, right. they would have a fan that you know that's a frequent person that's always like in the forums and stuff like that to come down and like oh we'll buy you lunch and we'll give you like twenty bucks and you get to hang out with us and then you just handle the merch table for the day. Yeah, and I actually um, there was a girl named Sarah who came and hung out with us at the Novi Pet Expo mm-hmm. and she hung out with me all day pretty much all day Sunday. Um, she actually, I, she listens to the podcast too. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, <laughs> uh, she would, pro- I'm sure she would be more than willing to do that. And then like the first day there was a guy there, uh, PJ, I think was his name. And I'm sure, I'm sure we could find people to do it. It's just figuring out, you know, the logistics of everything. How much do you bring? And then you've got to travel with it. So now we need either a trailer to put more stuff in. Right. Eventually, maybe we'll get to that point. If not, that's okay too. I mean, I know we could make money doing it, but you know, like I said, they they comp us to be able to come down to these things, and I'm good with that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Plus, I have like my T-shirt links and stuff on our business card, so if people really do want stuff, they can always get it at the, at, at the websites. That's true. Everybody just likes to shop online anyway. That way, you don't have to carry it around. True. So you were there for two days. Yes, the expo was two days, but we were actually downstate for what three and a half days. Uh, did you get to go walk around downstate? Um, we went to downtown Grand Rapids and kind of checked it out a little bit because Greg used to live down there. So we were trying to remember where his apartment complex was. And we went by the Van Andel Arena and the DeVos Center and the Amway Grand Hotel. So we did like the Grand Rapids things. But it's a big city and it's it's just, you know, you know me. Big cities just aren't really my thing. It's a really pretty city. It's very spread out mm. uh, and there's a lot of like parks and stuff. It's a very green city. Uh, and it's an art city, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do. But we kind of just drove around a little bit and then went back and hung out at the hotel, which was a really nice hotel, by the way. I was surprised considering it did not have the best of ratings online, so mm. I went and gave it a good rating. Oh, good! You're bumping up their average. <laughs> yeah, it. I was really impressed with the ho- the staff was amazing. The hotel was super clean. Like, yeah, it was dated. The carpet looked like it was straight out of the 70s, yeah. but it was clean. It wasn't stained. You know, the beds oh. were really nice. Did it smell it like? Nice. Did it smell like old? No, not at all. I mean, everything in the rooms was updated, but like the carpet wasn't. So what? You're not sleeping on the carpet anyway. Right. You're just there to leave the next morning anyway. Checkout times are so early at hotels. Yeah, these this hotel was ten. Checkout time was at ten. Yeah, you gotta give me till noon, and then I'm not up there. No. I'm, I'm already awake. That's not the problem. I just don't want to like have that countdown. And rush. I don't yeah. like being rushed. Yeah, give me, give me till noon. I can't stand that though. When people like give hotels bad reviews and they're like, "Oh, the carpet was dated and the comforter was dated." So what? Was it clean? Was it comfortable? Who cares what it looked like? <laughs> yeah, it, it is interesting what people will deem the companies for. I see yeah. that when I watch reviews a lot or something like that. It's just like, "Oh, the package showed up broken from the UPS guy. One star." And it's like, wait. <laughs> 
that's not <laughs> how that works. Yeah, and whose fault was that? Right? It's just because Ace Ventura is delivering your package doesn't mean that the company gets one star. Right? <laughs> Uh, no, we had a really good time. I'm really glad we went. What? But yeah, by the time everybody hears this, it'll be, what, just a few days before we leave for Canada. So Ooh, that's right. Yeah, we're getting ready to head to Canada. What's that going to be like? How, how do you get there? Because aren't you surrounded by water? Um. Yeah, Yeah. we have to drive about two and a half hours south and then over. We're going to go through Port Huron. <laughs> to the first bridge. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. We're going to go into Canada. We got to cross the border and get over into Canada. It's about a six and a half hour drive. Well, then adding whatever time it takes us at the border. Because we'll probably get stopped because we have dogs. So they'll have to do, like, all the checks and everything. They'll have to make sure they have their rabies certificates and stuff like that. And then we'll drive over into Canada and go into Toronto. It was so funny. I had some people tweeting at me and commenting. And they're like, whatever you do, don't go into Toronto. And then I've got other people that are like, oh, my gosh, you have to go to downtown Toronto. It's so amazing. And I'm like, man, if these dogs can survive New York City, right. I am pretty sure we can survive Toronto. Yeah, and you have to go to Toronto. Every time I watch hockey and they're at a Toronto game and it does that sweep over of the city, it looks so beautiful. It looks modern. Yeah, it's very pretty. It's it, we, we did look like at a couple different things that we want to do. And we're staying. We're stay, We're coming in, coming in a day early and staying an extra day because we want to go over to Niagara. So it's going to give us some time to like check out Toronto and check out, you know, as long as the dogs are up for it. We'll probably go downtown and probably check things out. You know, it, it, it's who knows when next time we'll be back there again is, you know, will we go next year? I don't know. I did find out, though, that this is the biggest expo in Canada. Like they, there's a couple different ones across Canada, but I guess this is the biggest one. And they sent me a map the other day. And mm. holy cow. It's, it's like Comic-Con huge. big. Yeah, it's gigantic. It's Comic-Con. So, oh, no, no, no. Don't put that joke in there. <laughs> hey, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I, I like I said, I, I looked at everything and I'm I, I'm I'm pretty excited. Where the convention is like, I think that all three days, I think it runs like ten to six, but we're only in our booth from eleven to three, which is nice. Every day we're there from eleven to three, and mm-hmm. it's three days, so we'll have that hour before that we can kind of wander around and get some footage and kind of check things out, and then at the end of it. Since it ends at three, you know, each day we'll have like two or three hours at the end of the day where we can wander around with the dogs and check things out. So we're going to be able to experience it, plus, you know, do everything else as well. I'm curious to see what you think about Toronto. I feel like that once you get around too much cement, that you just need your sticks and mud. I'm excited. We're, we'll have a little bit of a, a break. Uh, you know, McCann Dogs lives not far from there. Oh, yeah. So you get to go see Ken? Yeah. So I'm hoping, to, you know, they just got married too. Do they? Yeah, they got married in Hawaii. Will you be able to go to their place, like that big, huge yeah. compound they have? That is the plan. That That's place definitely looks the plan. So neat. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Well, you have to let us know next week how it goes. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It should be fun. I've never been to Canada, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, maybe their Tim Hortons taste better than the Michigan Tim Hortons. Maybe. So did you see the trailer for Lion King? Yes, I did. Just this morning, I did. And I couldn't be more excited about it. Did you know that a lot of people are, like, not excited about it? How could you not be so excited about it? When I heard that they were going to do this, like, a hmm, year or so ago, or a couple years ago, I was like, wow, this is going to be, like, okay. I mean, I guess they did a pretty good job at the Jungle Book. I couldn't envision what they would do with the Lion King. But then after I watched the trailer, I'm sold. It looks so good to me. How could anybody be upset about it at all? I think that part of it is, I think some people think that it's going to be changed a lot, where everything I've seen so far, it almost seems like they're doing a replica remake, where a lot of it is going to be word for word the same, only computer animation instead of animation and like i'm okay with that i I would be perfectly okay with that to have this visual recreation of the lion king i'm not okay with them changing anything and it doesn't look like they're going to change any of the major stuff yeah i i I think if they just do it frame for frame i would be happy with it if if they want to deviate on the side quests that's that's fine with me but the story essentially is the story you can't change the story or put a twist on it no just just go enjoy the modern version of the lion king i thought it looked beautiful i i do think it is it's stunning i watched that trailer and i just like i i don't know i felt like a little kid you know lion king out came out in what 19 1994 i think yeah. it was mm-hmm. like i'm super excited to this is a movie that i probably will want to go to the theater to see yes. if not even drive all the way to traverse city 
two and a half hours away and see it in the IMAX. Like, I'm that excited for this movie. It's not going to disappoint. There's no way after seeing that trailer, they're just going to do it right. And now that the computers have gotten, you know, really well with the CG stuff, it looks great. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a lot like on Twitter and on other social media sites where people are, they're either really excited about it, they're not ready to watch Mufasa die in high definition and all of this <laughs> like, like, and, and I kind of thought about that, like, that was a traumatic event in that movie. And, you know, watching it happen in a cartoon is one thing, but how graphic is it going to be in more I don't know like that that kind of has me a little on edge because you know you're gonna cry you know Mufasa is gonna die you know that spoiler alert if you've never seen the Lion King <laughs> right who has like, not right you know he's gonna die but you can't stop yourself from crying I've seen the movie I can't tell you how many times and every time I cry at that movie every single but I cry anytime an animal dies in a movie but I've seen people that are like, you know, how is this going to happen? And then I've just seen the people that are like, you're ruining my childhood. How are we ruining your childhood? They're not changing the original Lion King. They're not changing the animated movie that you love at all. <laughs> you're right, that movie in its entirety is still there. And if you want to watch it, you can. Right. None of that's changing. This is something new, but not really new, but new. So nobody's taking away your childhood yeah and it looks great <laughs> it just looks good there's no way they they're not going to hit a home run with this one i was really nervous like from the first few trailers that i saw i didn't know how they were going to make the animals if they were going to make the animals talk because you don't remember when they first like talked about it they didn't show any of the animals talking right they didn't really you have know. much yeah, where like this trailer, you actually saw the animals talking. And I'm like, okay, they are going to, it is going to be that type of movie. But I do agree like that, that scene is going to be, I don't know, it's going to be intense no matter what it is. Yeah, but it's great. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for this. I loved in the trailer where they showed like Simba and Timon and Pumbaa and they were walking across the log and the background was changing just like in the original movie. I'm yes. like, this is so great. And then the scene where they showed Simba and Nala and they're looking up from the pool at each other. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to put, yeah. So if they, even if they shoot it scene for scene, we'll be like, I remember this scene. I remember that yeah. scene. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to hear Ed. He better laugh well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like that. I'm so excited for that. Like Ed was one of my favorite characters that, that silly hyena from that whole movie. I have a little, I have a bunch of little Ed statues somewhere in a box down here that I should probably get out. But like, he was one of my favorite parts of that whole movie was that that stupid stupid little hyena and they were in a lot of the trailer as well so i'm sure i'm yeah. sure it'll be prevalent oh are they gonna do it mufasa Ooh, yeah. say it again. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel then about the aladdin trailer though i'm kind of a disney freak uh, yep. i'm a closet disney freak so like i'm excited about aladdin even if it is div different even if it's not even if they wouldn't have made the genie blue i that stuff doesn't bother me like as long as the core center of that story is there it's gonna be a good movie it's gonna it's gonna be good i loved the jungle book and the jungle book was not the remake of the jungle book was not like the original no. there was so much different in that movie and i still loved it i did not see it you didn't see it i did not see it oh my gosh but i don't mind you... the reimaginations of things i didn't mind alice in wonderland and how they changed that Oh, I loved Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I loved Tim Burton's version of Alice in Wonderland yeah, wasn't, so much. Yeah, and it was completely different. Oh, it was amazing, though. And it was so amazing. Was you know, good. Tim Burton directed Dumbo. Oh, man. See, I want to see that, too. Yeah. I've been told. I had a friend watch it, and she's like, you will cry. I'm like, everybody cries at Dumbo. When she starts singing Baby Mine, it's the worst point in the whole movie when it's like she, Dumbo's out there, and she can't reach him, and it's just it's so super sad, but like she told me she's like you know in this and they do change the story in dumbo a little bit there's a little bit more with like the uh i almost called him a conductor is he a conductor <laughs> or the circus is that what that's called he's a Ringmaster. Circus, he's a circus chef <laughs> circus chef Ringmaster. yeah like there is a little bit of a storyline difference in dumbo from the remake to the original but i still think they i still think that that one's going to turn out well as well i haven't seen it yet but I think it's going to turn out well. I don't know. I'm excited for all these Disney remakes just because I I really like I like Disney movies. Do you think that the Lion King will spark like Bambi? Do you think we're going to see just them go through the whole catalog? 
Man, I tell you what, if there is any Disney movie that I would love them for them to do oh, a remake of. Let me guess, let me guess. Is it The Mighty Ducks? No. Oh, <laughs> the Mighty Ducks was already live action <laughs> and animated. Okay. Let's, the, now think about it. The Mighty Ducks remade could be a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so animated. Now I'm going to throw the question off to you. An animated Disney movie from any of the animated series, which one would you want to see them remake into either like this, what would you call it, computer generated live or a live action movie? Ooh. Which one would you pick? I, you know what, I, my first thought was Pinocchio, just to see Pinocchio, but then there was all those creepy Pinocchio, like, movies, those horror movies, and Pinocchio did look pretty creepy, so I can't pick Pinocchio, and I would have chosen Alice in Wonderland, except for they've already done that, which doesn't leave me with, uh, with too much. Really? Yeah. Oh, I have an answer. Um, I would do. I see the Little Mermaid would be too easy for me. Like I can already see that. It looks, looks like Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> who would you Who would you pick? The Emperor's New Groove, but oh. David Spade would have to play the Emperor. Was he the Emperor in the original? Yes. Wow, go David Spade. I know that yeah. there was the Emperor's new clothes, and they had, they had all kinds of stuff. I missed out on the Emperor stuff, but anytime I caught bits and pieces of it, it was pretty funny. Tell me you've watched the Emperor's New Groove. Ah, uh, no, not in its okay, entirety. Okay, so that's what you're doing later. It's on Netflix. It's not a very <laughs> long movie. You totally have to watch it because it is one of my favorite animated Disney movies ever is the Emperor's New Groove. No touchy. No touchy. You have to watch that movie. It is so great yes yeah see, i don't even know what you're talking about so uh, okay oh gosh, i'll check so it out. i know what it looks like i can i can visually see it but no i don't think i watched that one in its entirety oh my gosh crunk pull the lever wrong lever you have to watch it <laughs> everybody at home's so like what's wrong great. with what's wrong with you dan oh my yeah right no. it's such a good movie and it would be really cool if they redid that as a live action movie and they cast like the yzma character if they actually cast the same character that played uh, her in the movie it either way david spade would have to be he would he would have to be Cusco. he would have to be the llama again and realistically before he gets too old john goodman really could play pacha again yeah and i think because even with the lion king when it showed the pictures it showed a lot of the people that were the original voices so if they're alive you and have to you have yeah. to do it otherwise you can't sell it if it doesn't sound like the original nobody else could do the voice of mufasa like like uh Darth Vader. I mean, James Earl Jones. <laughs> I mean, the voice of CNN. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Wait, we should end it differently. Okay. So you guys should tell us what you think. If so, I'm going to, uh, yeah, let's put that question out there to everybody listening. If you guys could pick any animated Disney movie to be remade into a live action movie, which one would you pick and why? Leave it in your comments or leave it on the group page. This is a fun discussion. Now I want to know. Akuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> PewDiePie. Ooh, PewDiePie in the news. Is he on top or is he not on top? Every 20 minutes or every other day, I see a video with him conceding, then winning again. What's the story with the Pewds? Let's find out. Because I haven't, as of today, I haven't checked the PewDiePie versus P series. I remember a few months ago, Blake and I were talking about this and we were on YouTube. There's a live counter and we just put the live counter on and just watched it for a while and it would just go up and up and up and down and up and down and by hundreds at a time. This is so interesting. So as of today, the day we're recording this, mm-hmm. what is it? It's Thursday, yes. April 11th. Right. He is 211,800 and some ahead of T series. Okay. So he's losing but traction again. He's losing traction again, but he's still, that's still a pretty big gap. Um, but they did pass him for what was it like over seventy two hours? Yeah, the, yeah, because I know they passed him at one point for like a second or two, and then it and then it went away like a while back. Yeah, and then it was like almost every night for a while there, T series would pass him, and then PewDiePie would pass, and right. T series would pass. But there was a good seventy two hours where T series was like forty thousand subscribers ahead, and then pewdiepie released this amazing music video what called e- congratulations what exactly is t-series t-series is uh in india uh channel and it's basically like every they have like scripted shows and music videos it's basically india's vivo and netflix okay. all on one channel uh, okay and they're just hosting it on youtube yes 
yeah, there's tons of content, which is why the channel is so big. People can watch so much content on there. And India is a huge company, a huge company, a huge country. Right. right. It's all corporate ran. It's a corporation. Uh, okay. okay. T-Series is actually a corporation. So it's one kid in his room versus a whole corporation in a country that has more population than we do. Yep. And PewDiePie right now is still in the lead. So how did he get the lead back? So he had the lead, then he lost it, you said, for 72 hours? Yeah, I think it was around 72 hours, and then he released that music video. And within, what was it, 24 hours, the music video had like 40 million wow. views on it, and That's... it skyrocketed him back over the top again. That's so crazy. When I watched it, it was so good. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. All of the digs at T-Series was just, it was so great. So great. Did you recognize anybody in the video? Uh, Rumi Official and, what is it, Boy in a Band? Is that the guy's name? What I know do? Rumi. Uh, Rumi Official is another Swedish YouTuber. You don't know who Rumi is? No. You don't watch as much YouTube as I do. Is just... I knew who Rumi Official was. Rumi is another Swedish YouTuber, and like at one point in time, he hated PewDiePie because he wanted to be the number one YouTuber in Sweden, mm -hmm. and then PewDiePie came along and like blew him out of the water. Oh, and okay. like for a while there, he kind of hated him, but then they're like, well, we're both from Sweden, so we should be friends. So <laughs> they came back. <laughs> they hugged it out, literally. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And Rumi makes music. Like That's one of the things that he does, is he does music stuff, so... That's why he was able to help PewDiePie make this music video. It was good. It was so good. It was, I've lit, it's so good stuck in your head too. And I mean, it's not just the fact that it's got that catchy tune. It's also mm -hmm. the fact that like so many digs to calling them out for, you know, putting pr pirated songs on their videos, calling them out for the, the guy that runs their company, having all these collusions and then making the jokes about the Indian mafia. And, yes. and if you guys <laughs> haven't seen the video, you totally need to watch it. And I heard they, uh, I heard T-Series uh, put up a cease and desist from it. They, well, they put up a cease and desist before that. They wanted PewDiePie to stop talking about them and stop doing a bunch of stuff because they, first they were saying that it was defamation and mm -hmm. they were trying to say that he was harming their company. But now, apparently, there's actually a court in India that has ruled, I don't remember the exact words, but they've made some ruling and they now are trying to get YouTube to take down that music video, plus other videos that PewDiePie's made by saying that they're blatantly racist and it's defamation. And it's not. None of it is. Right. I mean, anybody with half a brain can see that it's not. And I get it. They're a big company and they feel like they feel like he's hurting them. But the reality of it is, is he's not. I mean, no. if anything, it's bringing more attention to both of them. Yes, Absolutely. So I feel like they should just, you know, roll with it and kind of do their thing. But it is what it is. It's, but uh, it's been fun. It has been so fun. Yeah. I, I really, I've been, I've been watching the battle, and I don't know. I just get a kick out of it, and it's funny. It's funny to see, and it's funny to see how the corporation, like you said, is fighting back this one kid in his. I mean, it's not a kid, but this one guy in his bedroom making meme videos right on like, the race to 100 million subscribers right like who do you think's gonna win um where are we at now uh, uh, close uh he is two hundred and eleven thousand nine hundred and sixty four ahead now what's his total number 93 million eight hundred and sixty nine thousand. Right, so he's got seven more million to go uh yeah ooh, that's gonna be a tough battle at the end i don't know i don't know if he can hold off because that number was higher than two hundred thousand last week when we first uh found out about this and it's it was 350,000 when mm -hmm. I when I messaged you last week yeah, well, it sounds like he needs to release another music video if he wants a boost again <laughs> well and you know what maybe he will maybe, maybe if they pass him he'll have another music video that right? he'll come out with that'll be another congratulations and here, here's the thing I want to know Felix's choice of outfits in this video is he just being silly or is this how we're dressing out in sweden are we dressing like we're in the 90s with the oakley's and the like sweatsuits or like the i don't know the bright zipper up stuff and i think that's just his thing, is that his thing? like i think that's just pewdiepie hmm. well it works. i do i think that's, that's just his style that's just how he that's just how he rolls <laughs> <laughs> Do you you got to remember, he's, he doesn't do a lot of interviews, but he's done interviews before where he kind of says he doesn't really like money necessarily. Like, he makes a lot of money, but he doesn't spend a lot of money. Right. Like, he, he could care less whether or not he had it or not. Right. But and I think he's... he's just a genuine dude. Like, I think he's just a genuine guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this version of PewDiePie better than the, you know, the crazy game version of PewDiePie when he was doing his stuff. And yeah, see, I never watched him when he was a gamer. I didn't start watching him till he was doing more, not really structured, but more of those like sit down talky type funny videos. Like I never really watched him when he was just a gamer. I didn't get into it till way after. Like I knew who he was and I was subscribed, yeah. but I didn't really watch where now it's like, 
I like his meme reviews. I think they're hilarious. A lot of the stuff he done, does is really funny and it's fun to watch. And I love how he interacts so well with his audience on his on his Reddit and all that stuff. And he's like, you know, they, they send the memes to him. It's just fun. I don't know. It's just fun. He it's very ma- nice. <laughs> he makes it <laughs> seem like he doesn't have much pressure to do anything, even though that there's got to be pressure because, you know, everybody oh, yeah. watches his stuff and he can say anything he wants and millions of people see it at a time. But he always acts so nonchalant about it. And I think that's partially because, you know, he's probably pretty set in money. I don't yeah. think he's broke. So I think he can kind of just do whatever he wants. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And I think that gives him that he's not one of these creators that's like constantly struggling to f- try to figure out the next big thing. And what am I going to make next? And how am I going to make this work? And oh my gosh, add dollars and blah, 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 blah. He just is who he is at this point. And it's like, and if I say something controversial, well, sorry. <laughs> right. He kind of has that freedom. Who do you think will get to 100 million first? I hope it's PewDiePie. I mean, I don't know. Mr. Beast needs to give him a couple more pushes. Right. But I really do hope it's PewDiePie. I don't know. Like, I'm sitting here. I have it rolling while we're talking, and it's going up. He's he's gaining in the gap. That's because people are listening to us, and they're flocking over to YouTube to PewDiePie's channel to subscribe. Hashtag subscribe to PewDiePie. Yeah, they're actively, all the people that listen to us are T-Series fans, and they're actively unsubscribing from <laughs> T-Series. Right. <laughs> it's definitely a race. Yep. It would be cool to see him hit 100 million first. I, I honestly, he deserves it more. I do believe that. Mm-hmm. Just I, because he is one guy. Right. Yeah, no, I do. I do. And he kind of fights for the last of the old creators. Yes. It's, it's definitely shown the the directional change that youtube is i mean going from a guy that just films video games and kind of does talky videos versus a giant corporation so a giant corporation is going to become the most subscribed channel on youtube i I think the top five channels are all corporations right i think wwe's there and like the i think vivo Vivo stuff's there and itunes music or something one of the music things are there and yeah nothing's just a creator to get down to like dude perfect is around and so is uh mr beast yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the times have changed. Yeah, Mr. Beast is keeping it going though. It was what's up with these things with these YouTubers these days and like knowing that you're going to get so much money from each video, it gives you almost like a budget to like waste it on whatever you want. Like whoever lets go of this car first gets the car or, or we're going to put a right. million pennies in this guy's house. Where is that money coming from? If that's just all ads? Some of it I'm sure is his AdSense, but I'm sure he also gets sponsorship deals. So weird. You know, like a lot of times, like David Dobrik, when he gives away a car, he always partners with SeatGeek. SeatGeek buys the car. And a lot of it is they probably pay him a small amount. And then he's like, I don't want to be paid this massive amount of money. I also want to give away a car. Right. So, you know, they pay him the amount, they get the car, he gives away cars to his friends. So it's like a sponsored deal. And I think Mr. Beast does some of that too, where it's a sponsorship deal. And, you know, they're giving him money to, to do those things. Mr. Beast is always giving away cash. Yeah, he gives away a lot of cash. I liked watching his videos where he would like jump on Twitch streamers and just be like, "We're gonna give him this many bits, and then we give him five thousand bits and ten thousand yes. bits." And... Yes, and people were going crazy. He literally changed people's lives doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then... you know there were streamers that he was on there that were you know they it wasn't like they were big streamers you know and a lot of them, some of them I know the one he did the person was talking about how they weren't even sure how they were gonna make their rent and he did like whatever it was, like $20,000 worth of donations through Twitch to these people. And I mean, like, that's just crazy. It's awesome that he's able to do that, but... Right. It's interesting what you can do for for content. I watched one where he just rented out, like, a little pop-up booth in, like, a strip mall, and he went and spent, like, I don't know, like, 20 or 30 grand at Best Buy and, like, bought all kinds of PlayStations and stuff and then put it in there uh, in his little boutique, and everything was, like, a dollar, and people were coming in and buying stuff for a dollar. That was so crazy. He's really good at coming up with crazy content Uh like that. Yeah. Yeah, but I've noticed that little trend of like mass prizes or big amounts of things or like uh, shockable deeds yes. being done in these videos that don't have very much production value, if at any. Yeah, yeah. Shock value is still a huge thing. Clickbait title shock value is still a huge thing on YouTube. I mean, people want to watch something different. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, YouTube is changing and corporations kind of are becoming the top channels and stuff like that. But it's still, there's still people out there that just want to watch people do crazy stuff. Yes. And as a uh, prank channels and the prank things start getting boring and, and banned shock value, I think is the new prank. 
Yeah, where you're not hurting anybody, but at the same time, you can find a way to make something where people go, oh my gosh. Yeah, like that could oh, have been where... spent better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not, nobody's getting hurt. Nobody's getting, it's like, wow, like these pay it forward videos. I don't know. They're just, it is what it is. Yeah, or but they'll spend so much money on orbs. Like, oh, we got one billion orbs, or we got one million pennies and just shoved it in the house, yeah. or we got two million Lego, and then we put all the Lego in the house, and... Then what do they do with the Lego after that? Probably, hopefully, they donate it to kids who want to play with Legos. All right. Where do you think all those balls are from the Roman Atwood videos? So Roman Atwood filled his whole house with the balls for the ball pit. Remember that? Do you remember yep. when they backed up that huge truck with a billion balls in it? I have no idea. I know that. I know Roman kept some of them. They had a room upstairs that they kept some of them in. There were so many balls. Yeah, because their dog ended up, Flash ended up going in there as a puppy and pooped all over in the room. So they had to go, they had to take them all out of the room and clean them all. I also think, didn't it rain? Didn't it rain while they were trying to get the balls? And so everything in the house was just wet. Yeah, it was wet. Oh, man, Roman Atwood. He's a person that, like, I've seen bits and pieces of his stuff, maybe about 20 minutes total. And that's it. I don't know much about him. I used to despise Roman's videos. And it was because of a video, a prank video he did where he faked his his now wife um faked her son dying in a like a four-wheeler accident what yeah it was horrifying i don't even know if the video is still up youtube standards today it might not be up anymore yeah so they rigged this four-wheeler and it it had a remote control and he was riding around with her kid or one of the kids i think it was her kid on the four-wheeler and what they ended up doing was they rigged it and they had like this little jump that kind of went off into the woods and on the other side of it they had a trigger where they were going to blow up a bunch of stuff so it looked like a big fireball coming out of the woods i'm not even kidding it's so real and he ended up you know was riding around with the kid and then he went behind a truck and like had the kid hide and then acted like kid was on the four-wheeler by himself and the remote control four-wheeler like starts to go and he's yelling and he's going no 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 and the four-wheeler takes off and it like there's this camera just showing her face and the thing goes over and then there's this big fireball and like she is running towards the fire just so like like what oh that's just that is that's horrible that is not fun. Just, that is not it, funny. It's not funny like it was not a funny video I wa- I showed it to Jamie I'm like this it's not that was and like that was my one of my first exposures to roman's videos and i just had this like i don't know this nasty taste like i was like i don't want to watch this guy he's a jerk but slowly like his videos would keep popping up in my feed and he does have a husky so you know i mean (laughs) kind of a sucker right so I, i would watch some of his videos so i could see flash and then it was like i don't know as i started watching i kind of realized I don't think he's that guy. I think it's the same thing we were talking about earlier. The shock value brought the views. Yes. So whatever he could do to bring the views, he was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because his videos were high production values. They were ramping yes. up a lot. Cars flipping, things exploding, yeah. billions of things. He was almost like the original person to do that. Yeah, yeah. And now, like, things that he does, fam- you know, family-ish style vlogs and things like that, and, you know, they got married and he he filmed the proposal. That was a really, really, really good video. And then for a while there, he was doing like these hour and a half long vlogs, which were really interesting, but hard to watch because they were an hour and a half long. Yeah. And now like he's not vlogging as much as he used to. He's kind of like taking more time for his family and stuff like that. But I will have to say over the years that Roman Atwood has definitely grown on me and I do watch his content quite often. Is he over? I don't think so. I mean, he still gets pretty good views on his videos. I don't think he shows up like in the, I don't think he shows up to a lot of new people very often. Yeah. I haven't seen him pop up like naturally in a while. Yeah. I think he's one of those people that kind of fell off and like, isn't really featured on the homepage anymore and like, isn't really recommended like he used to be. And I think part of it is, well, he's got kids in his videos. So I don't even know if he still has comments enabled on his videos. I have no idea. Plus he did the prank videos. So that was a a big no, no. Now they don't want you doing that anymore. To the point where they'll take down the old stuff, right? Yeah. 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 So, but I mean, I think he's still pulling like a million to 2 million views of vlog. So yeah. Yeah. You know, he's still, he's still making it. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. He's just not on the forefront of YouTube right now. Right. He had a show uh the what was it the roman atwood's daydreams or something Mm -hmm. he had a youtube red show oh that's right Uh, he did yeah and i don't know if it's still running but he did have a youtube red show 
Did you watch Prank vs. Prank YouTube Red Show? That was awful. I watched some of it. It was horrible. It was so clunky. I think it was, it was awful because they were already in the process of yes. like breaking up when all that was happening. Yes, and it was so awkward when they put jesse on a crane and he was being held up there and he was not okay and like he was yelling yeah. every safe word <laughs> and yeah. yeah yeah that's why that's why it was awkward because it was already turmoil yeah there was already a lot going on i mean there's a lot of youtubers that you know go through that you know they they do these videos together and stuff like that and it just it doesn't end well oh not it's as bad as them <laughs> right yeah that was i think the feud's still going funny. on yeah yeah, and now, like, I think he's got a new girlfriend, and, like, you read in their comments and stuff, and people are just nasty to Every them. day, yep. It's like, just let them live their lives. But they were together for, they were together for, what, 11 years? And they did YouTube together for 10 years, so. Yeah. And some of their stuff was funny. Like, I liked some of their pranks. Yeah, I, I, I used to watch them quite a bit. And then uh, Gina kind of started doing all the weird, I don't know, like, just weird videos with fast cars and all these guys in the video, and it just... There was no real storyline and everything didn't really make sense and he was making really weird videos and like i don't know just really out there for a while after they broke up so oh, it was, yeah i think people just didn't have time to and as horrible as it is it's not like this it's their life but i think people didn't have a lot of time to heal from everything that went on before they kind of started doing their own thing so quickly yes did you remember when we ran into him at vidcon yes dude he was like almost like a he was almost like a parody of himself Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. He had like black shoes, black jeans, black shirt. He had that like yep. beard. He had that like, he had that yeah. same facial hairline as Justin Timberlake did in that Dick in a Box video. Yeah. It was like yeah, that. It was exactly. all dyed black, and he had black hair, and he just looked lit. Yeah, and yeah. he probably was. Yeah, it was mid afternoon on a on a Saturday. <laughs> 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 You're allowed to. Right. Yeah, those well, guys. Sure he was. Those guys were really good about putting their turmoil on Front Street. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were, but it's what people wanted. Well, uh, all this brought me back to good luck, PewDiePie. I hope you get to a hundred million before T series. Subscribe to PewDiePie. And shots were fired to every other creator on YouTube this week. Right. <laughs> So that'll do it for this week's episode of the CC Mouse Podcast. We did not have anybody, Jess, leave us a question this week on speakpipe.com slash Podcast. What gives? Don't don't you know a million people? I I do. How come nobody left us a question? I know, right? Those are super fun. You guys don't be don't be shy. Just just do it. Yeah. I enjoy it. We're not scary. And mm -hmm. realistically, it's just a recording, so you're not talking directly to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So follow us on Podbean, and you can get there by going to ccmousepodcast.com. And like we said, you can find pictures and more write-ups about the story and more information than just listening to us with your ears. You can follow us on Instagram at ccmousepodcast. And until next week... YouTube. Don't forget YouTube. <gasps> oh, that's right. You've been doing all the hard work on YouTube. And follow us at the CC Mouse Podcast on YouTube. We just did a lot of visuals to make the podcast come alive. Yay! Yay! So we'll see you guys next week. Same mouse time, same mouse podcast. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we did a thing.